Great, thank you, Costas, and welcome, everyone. This is an exciting time to actually be kicking off this first set of projects and looking at Stream A. It's something that the Association and the Commission has been working on for many years, trying to get to this point where we can have this large number of projects really looking towards 5G evolution and 6G. So it's great to have everyone on board. What I'd like to start with is just spending five minutes looking at some of the background, some of the drivers to this work. And then obviously we'll have the important presentations, which will then be the actual content of Stream A looking in more detail. So let me move on to the next slide, please. I think maybe it's worth remembering that we are still in the 5G era. So 5G is the key technology today and will be the key technology tomorrow. So we are in the midst of, of standardization, standardizing 5G advanced, and, and that will be the key technology going up to 2030 turn of this decade. So what is happening in stream A, where we are considering the evolution of 5G towards 6G is absolutely vital and absolutely valid. And that is vital work to be doing over the next period of time. Nonetheless, if we look at the 6G question, so we might not be able today to give a clear point of where 5G stops and 6G begins. We're looking at common technical areas in both domains. But with 6G, what we hope to do is to take things a step further. So by reconsidering designs and considering these aspects, we hope that we can go beyond 5G, beyond 5G advanced. And these drivers are in three main areas. So we have the societal needs, and this is something we do need to consider overall, that we have obviously an ever increasing um, need to be energy efficient, to be sustainable, if you will. We need to be inclusive. We, we need to try and um, build systems that solve some of our societal problems, and this leads to the need to be sort of this human centric approach, um, integrating new technologies like artificial intelligence, trying to make things trustworthy and more secure. And this leads into the policy area, the uh, attempt to try and make Europe more resilient, if you will, try and provide this sovereignty where we have a, a system which is available to our citizens and our, our industries and equally a technology which actually respects the European values, that it protects personal data, that it provides security and a trustworthy system. And lastly, clearly we wish to apply those technologies. Those technologies will be the building blocks of, of future industries. They will provide competitiveness for European industry. So it's vital that it meets the needs of those. Going on to the next slide, so that's where why we need to be looking at 6G. And this is talking about how we're going to do it. So we have those drivers uh, coming into this smart network and services JU, which you are all a part of, and that's great. But there are clearly a set of results which we need to do. So we've talked about the, the need to try and provide technological leadership from, from Europe. Um, and, and clearly, we wish to make the overall industry competitive for the future not just the telecoms industry, across all the industries. And there's a series of KPIs and KVIs that we also need to meet, which are also part of this Smart Network and Services JU. And generally, we should also remember that we cannot do this alone. It can be no single country or single region that defines 6G. We want a global 6G standard, and that means we need this international collaboration to try and come up with a, a global 6G standard. The next slide, please. Maybe just then to finish my introduction, I would like to sort of talk about a couple more concrete points that we need to put into place for smart network and services. So it's great to be having this kickoff webinar today. This is super, this is a major milestone, uh, but there are a number of things that we need to still do to bring SNS to a level it needs to be. The first thing is the collaboration agreement. So the collaboration agreement controls the interaction between the projects within the Smart Network and Services JU. And we now have this document, this contract. It's now being signed first by the 6GIA board members, 
and we will then push this out to the project, the project leaders, to make sure that all of their partners will also sign this agreement so that we can then have agreement across all the community who are active in the Smart Network and Services JU. This will then lead into the working groups. So with the change from 5GPP to Smart Network and Services, we need to renew this whole way that we do working groups. And we'll have three main types of working groups. We'll have SNS project working groups, which are similar to 5GPPP working groups, but legally separate. We will have 6GIA working groups as we have today, but we will also have these so-called SNS strategic working groups, which will be created by the Smart Network and Services Governing Board and will have a, a high strategic significance, trying to push certain agenda points, certain policy points forward through Europe. And the plan would be that um, we need those collaboration agreements signed and in place before we can create the steering board and technical board for smart network and services ju so it's vital that we try and do that as quickly as possible what we would try and do is we would try and have some pre-meetings with the projects to try and coordinate amongst projects but this would be something very uh separate um it wouldn't be the formal steering board that we can only really bring into place once we have a a, a mass of um organizations that have signed that collaboration agreement so that we can have meaningful elections. Okay, uh, once then we have the steering board in place, we can then approve those SNS project working groups and move on from there. I've gone through this very quickly. I appreciate that that's perhaps not very clear. We will be coming back to this and explaining it in more detail. So please, this was just a, a first uh, informing session. We will go into more detail on this going forward. Let me then hand over to my European Commission colleague who will then take this to a little bit more detail. Please. The floor